this is a third project update video wanted to go ahead and get this posted before we got the job completed once it's completed i'll put some before pictures a couple during and then after landscaping and all that this has been quite the project if y'all would subscribe to my channel hit the bell up top and you'll be notified when i post the next video thanks started uh, leveling up the dirt now on top cap filling up the interior corrugations so we don't have any settling and then uh, we'll be running the top cap all the way down here we're using a synthetic top cap getting the poles leveled off cleaned up still installing the inside whaler over here we're going to continue on around the corner there with the return wall We use eight and 10 inch pilings behind the wall. These are eight and 10 foot long also. These poles have been vibrated in with a vibratory hammer. We put two two bay drag plates on front of it to help uh, secure it in the ground. And then we drill it and then install these five eighths tie back rods. They're 18 foot back behind the wall. return wall over here got the ramp out got all the poles in and the whalers on now getting ready to start installing some more vinyl sheet bonds up the side We've got our lower eight foot exposed wall installed. Now we're working on a return wall on the side. Customers got a ramp that exist, was existing that ran down the side of his property. So we're rebuilding that and actually beefing it up pretty good. He wants to be able to take a small piece of equipment down it uh, for bringing dirt or whatever he needs or sand down to the beach. You can see we're installing some white sand down here also throwing that over the wall so we can have a white beach area. It's gonna be really nice when it's all said and done. Here we've started excavating for the upper wall. This wall will be eight foot exposed also. We're doing a naval style wall also with the eight inch pilings, 25 foot long, triple two by eight whalers, um, leaving the pilings up four foot exposed. We're gonna run a uh, 14 runs of uh, type 316 cable rail through the uh, pilings. Over here you see the ramp that uh, we're putting back in now. The decking on it is rough cut 2x8s for structural support. You see we've got several 2x8 uh, stringers in there for support. Here we've got the sheets installed. 
on the lower section. If you look in between the corrugations on the lower section of the wall, you can see where I've got some uh, six by six blocks. This helps support the interior corrugations from Bowen out in this area right here. earth anchoring system is a real good option when you can't really access the area behind the wall. He's got a swim pool in this area here so we're not really able to dig back far enough to put traditional posts to the ground uh, without interfering with the structure of the pool. So these things here, we drive them in and then there's, it's like a big toggle bolt. Once you drive it in, you pull on it, the thing opens up and we've got a 15 ton jack that we pull on that thing. We pull about seven to 10,000 pounds of pressure on it. And you've got one of these supports every five foot four inches going through this front piling on the wall right here so it's pretty good uh, support for this wall actually had a 20,000 pound traco the one we're using here driving right up on top of the wall and um, had no problems with the wall bowing out at all The rod you see uh, that the vibrator plate is uh, pushing on is called a driving rod. We drive the, the manta ray back into the ground with this driving rod. Once we get back uh, to the elevation, this is about 12 foot deep right here, we tie this ribbon on it so we can locate the rod, go ahead and push it back into the ground a little bit further. Uh, when we do locate the rod, we put a coupling nut on it, tie it to another threaded rod which runs through the front pole. After we get the manta ray driven back to the depth that we need, uh, we tie a chain around this uh, driving rod and then we pull the driving rod back out. Then we just move on to the next one, do it again. You're the man, Kevin. Natural star. You can see here he's installing the driving rod to drive the manta ray anchor back in the ground. You can also see it pivots right where the threaded rod screws into that uh, square assembly there. When you pull on that threaded rod, it actually stands that plate up like a big flat plate right behind it. That's what gives it its pulling power. Pilings installed on the uh, second wall. Got the uh, whalers put up, triple two bait whalers, top and bottom, two rows. Now we're installing the Everlast vinyl 16 foot sheet panels, eight foot embedded and eight foot above the ground. Here we're drilling the holes through the uh, pilings for the tieback rods. Once we get these holes drilled through, we'll take another threaded rod, run it through there with a coupling nut, tie it to the existing tieback rod that's already been installed into the ground. This is one of the ways that we load the uh, manta ray anchors. We take the traco to it, vibrate it with the vibratory plate, pulling on the rod, trying to get that anchor to stand back up straight. This is our manta ray anchor puller. It pulls 15 tons. As you're pulling on it, you can see the rod 
being pulled out of the ground as a manta ray anchor is standing up into right, its final release. position. We typically pull about seven to 10,000 pounds of pressure on each one. All right, good. good. Yep. Get a back whaler installed on this wall, and then they'll be putting a top cap on it. And you see where we're tying into the upper wall here with a little angle wall to help protect the neighbor's uh, side also. Once we get the tractor out of here, we'll close this up, continue to wall on down, and get the whole top wall backfilled. got us another really cold day out here winds blowing out of the north probably about 25 maybe 30 gust but it's a little chilly out here got to dress warm for this project the temperature was uh, 37 this morning when I first got out here we're installing the inside whaler now getting it bolted up the inside whaler actually supports the top cap once we put the uh, synthetic top cap down on top like to fill up the corrugations because if not then the sand kind of settles down in that area there and customers have a tendency to think that the walls are leaking when you get a little sunk spot behind the wall we don't like to have that happen up here now got the vinyl installed return wall installed now we've got it drilled and installing the tieback rods to the tieback pilings here's the before shot of the project uh, before we got started the uh, mid retainer wall was failing falling over was pushing all the decks down the hill and uh, we've gone in there and tore all that stuff out and installed these two new uh, retainer walls. You see the lower one down there about eight foot high. Then we got about a 20 to 30 foot area from the lower wall to the top wall. It's eight foot high and that kind of levels out the area where a swimming pool is. Hey, thanks for watching a progress update on this project. Stay tuned and subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when I do the completion of this project.